everyone. I have a prenatal Pilates workout for you today. We're gonna to keep things on the shorter side. For equipment, you're gonna want a set of light hand weights or you could just wear wrist weights. Mine are two pounds. You're also going to want a small pillow, something to rest your head on. Doesn't that sound nice? For when we're in a side lying position. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Nicole. I'm a stock trained Pilates instructor and a pregnancy and postpartum corrective exercise specialist. So you're in good hands today. However, I'm not there in the room with you. So you first and foremost are gonna to listen to your doctor, listen to your body. If anything's not feeling right, you're feeling dizzy, lightheaded, nauseous, you're going to stop. Now I am 34 weeks along filming this and class is definitely made with the third trimester in mind, kind of the back half of the third trimester. You can absolutely do it at any point throughout pregnancy, but I'm personally reaching the point in my pregnancy where I'm feeling great, but I'm definitely feeling the need to just dial the intensity down a little bit. So this Pilates class will be on the gentler side. We'll still challenge ourselves, but it is a little more toned down. Okay, with all that said, let's get into it. We are gonna start in a side lying position. You won't need the weights right away, but you will want one of them within easy reach. Why don't you mirror me? Let's lay down on the left side of our body. So your head goes on the pillow. Your bottom left arm is gonna stretch out long and we're going to have the bottom left knee bent and I want you to take your top right leg and reach it long. The reason I want you to straighten out this leg is notice that difference. When the knees are bent, especially when we're later in pregnancy, notice how it's just so easy to collapse into the bottom side body and kind of crunch this top waist. Now, when we stretch this leg out, placing the foot on the floor, feel that a little bit of elongation, that little lift through the bottom. That's what I want. Now, I want you to take your top hand on the top rib cage, and we're going to start with just breathing, focusing on lateral expansion into the rib cage, into our hand. So we're going to inhale through the nose, focus on expanding the rib cage into your top hand. Exhale is out through the mouth. And you'll feel the ribs move gently in and down. Inhale through the nose, relax through the pelvic floor. Expand into the right side of your rib cage. Exhale slowly out through the mouth, pelvic floor lifts. Abdominals engage, hugging your bump up and in, ribs move in and down. Twice more. And then from here, let's take this right arm. We're going to reach it forward. And we're just going to trace circles with it up overhead, back and around. If it feels good to add in a little rotation through your mid spine, rocking back and forward, that's fine too. Or you can just focus on the arm and the shoulder joint. Let's switch direction of our circles. One more. And then you're gonna tent these top fingertips on the floor. I want you to bend this top right knee and we're gonna trace hip circles now. So you're making a nice big circle with the knee and it's okay if your hip rolls open as the knee lifts up, it's fine. You can invite in a little freedom of movement here. Just want us to warm things up. Switch direction of those circles. Nice big circles with the knee. Oh, this feels good. Can we just do this all class? That'd be a nice one, right? <laughs> one more circle. And then I want you to straighten this leg back out, planting the foot on the floor so we get that length through the side body. Now let's make sure that we're in a good alignment. So your hips and shoulders are in one line. Oh, I just gotta hop my shoulders back. And we're going to grab one weight. Bottom arm is down for support. Now we're engaged to the bottom side obliques. So again, we're constantly thinking about length through the waist, not crunching and collapsing down. I want you to take your top right arm, bend the elbow, you're open through the chest, Chest is open, shoulders stacked, and we're going to do a lateral rotation targeting the rotator cuff. So you're gonna peel knuckles up to the ceiling and then you're gonna lower down. Now, especially as you get later in pregnancy, as your bump gets bigger, in side-lying positions, it's really easy to just let the bump roll us forward like this. I want you to make sure that your shoulders are stacked one on top of the other and you're staying open. A great modification if you're having trouble staying in this position is to put a folded blanket or towel or even a small pillow under your bump right here, and that can make this position a lot more comfortable.
Rotating open, elbow stays in close. We're gonna do a lot of shoulder work today. Mixing in this idea of opening up through the chest, connecting to our mid back as we challenge the shoulder joint. We're gonna hold this rotation open and holding the arm still, we're gonna lift and lower the leg in four, three, two. Next time you peel open, you're gonna hold open but without rolling open and puffing through the rib cage. So everything stays stacked. We've just drawn that shoulder blade in towards midline. Now from here, you're gonna to point to lift the top leg, flex to lower. Point through the ankle as you lift, flex to lower. Not collapsing into the bottom side waist as the leg lifts up. So it doesn't have to lift up super high. Reach long and up. Now, if you are not feeling challenged through the top shoulder, you can always hold both weights in your hand to make it a little heavier. If the burnout gets to be too much, take a break and just put the weight on your hip like this. Maybe you just do this for a couple reps and then you try to go back in to that rotation hold. It's a small movement, but the muscles of the rotator cuff are fairly small. So don't be surprised if you do feel a big burn with just the small weight in that shoulder area. Now we're gonna hold the leg lifted. We're gonna go back to moving the arm. We'll straighten it out. We'll do a single arm fly. In four, we hold that leg up. In three, two. Next time the leg lifts up, you're holding it lifted, you're reaching it long. Now we're gonna straighten that arm up towards the ceiling. You're gonna lower it down parallel to the floor and we're gonna lift it back up, retracting the shoulder blade. So the shoulder blade glides into midline in towards your spine as the arm opens up. As the arm opens up, don't flare through the ribs. Keep reaching long through the leg. Can you lift it up one more inch without collapsing into the waist? You could also always make this class harder by wearing ankle weights. So we've been doing this alternating pattern, arm moves, leg moves, arm moves, leg moves. And coming up, we're gonna hold that arm up to the ceiling. It's gonna be time for the leg to move. It'll be a bend and straighten of the knee, adding in some internal rotation. In three, two, last one, hold that arm up towards the ceiling. Now we're going to bend this right knee and as you draw it forward, I want you to internally rotate within the hip joint, lifting the foot up, tapping knee to knee. And then you're gonna press it long and straight, coming parallel. So it comes in, you internally rotate in the hip joint, press it straight. I love incorporating internal rotation in these classes, always, but especially towards the end of the third trimester, because finding that internal rotation helps us open up through the back of the pelvic floor and make a little more space there. Pelvic floor and hip joint, very deeply connected. So we've been alternating leg moves and arm moves. We're gonna put things together. We're gonna hold with the right knee bent. We're gonna do internal to external rotation, adding back in that single arm fly of our top arm. So next time you find internal rotation, I want you to pause. So the knee is down, the foot is pointing up. As you exhale, I want you to find external rotation. So you're gonna peel the knee open, the foot drops down. Can you add in the arm? As you find internal rotation, your top arm lowers. External rotation, fly it open. Moving our breath with every exhale, you think, Connect to the deep core, hug your bump up and in, little lift to the pelvic floor. <sighs> Exhale as you externally rotate and open. Inhale as you find internal rotation and lower. I want the inhale to happen on the internal rotation so we really get that opening through the back of the pelvic floor. <sighs> we're gonna hold internal rotation and we're gonna hold the arm parallel to the floor. We're gonna finish with some little pulses. In four, you're almost done with this side. Three, two. Next time you find internal rotation, hold. I want you to flex through the ankle, arm is parallel to the floor. Now it's a little pulse up and back of the leg, a little kick up and back, and add in a little pulse of the arm as you go. Maintain internal rotation so your thigh bone is wrapping in as the leg pulses up. Give me eight, seven, six, five, four, 
three, weight down, and two, one, stack the knees on top of each other, weight can go off to the side. Now I want you to plant your top right hand down on an exhale, we're gonna press ourselves up, propping us on this bottom forearm. So exhale, feel the connection to your core, hug the bump up and in. When you have that abdominal engagement, you're gonna press yourself up, propping yourself on this bottom left forearm. And then from here, I just want you to pivot the forearm so it's going towards the top of your mat. It doesn't have to be directly at the top of your mat. It can be at a comfortable angle for your shoulder. We are going to do just a tricep press on this arm, keeping the knees bent and stacked. Now I want you to make sure you're connected to the side body so we're not hanging down like this and dumping into the shoulder. Really stay lifted. As you exhale, you're gonna lift the elbow off of the mat, straightening the arm. Inhale, you're gonna lower down, exhale, so we're spread out through the hand, so you've weight in your fingertips, so it's not all just in the wrist. Pressing up and lowering down. Exhale. So we're going to keep this going, but we're going to make it a little bigger. Adding in some movement of this top right leg, externally rotating it and kind of rotating our torso over to the right as well. So next time you press the arm straight, we're gonna lift this top leg, we're gonna externally rotate it, and we're gonna rotate our torso open with it. And then as we inhale, we're just gonna stack everything lower to the forearm. Exhale, up, open through the hips. Inhale to lower. Four more. Twice more. And this final time, you're gonna take it all the way up to a cross-legged position. So you're gonna push off that bottom arm, come to a cross-legged position, hands on knees, and let's just trace some circles within that hip joint. and reverse direction of those circles. So we're gonna repeat that from the top, starting nice and gentle with that side body breathing, taking it into that whole side body series. So I am just gonna grab my pillow and flip around, grab my weights. We'll finish class using both weights. I know we've just been using one at a time so far, but that will change. Let me flip that pillow over. Last time I laid down, I have like a S-shaped earring and it always catches on thread, so I need the flat side. All right, so let's lay down on our right side body now. You're gonna take that right arm straight forward. And we're gonna get, take our top left leg and reach it long and place the foot on the ground. So again, we get that lengthening through the top side of our waist. And we're gonna start with side body breathing. So I want you to take your left hand on your left rib cage and on the inhale, think of expanding the rib cage into your hand. Exhale slowly out through the mouth, ribs move in and down. <sighs> Inhale, expand the rib cage, relax the pelvic floor. Exhale, lift to the pelvic floor. <sighs> Hug of the bump up and in as you engage your deep core, ribs move in and down just twice more. And now let's take some arm circles. You're gonna reach that left arm forward and circle it up overhead and back. Oh, that feels nice. Switch direction of those circles. Last circle. Plant your left fingertips on the floor. You're going to bend this top knee and we're going to trace some nice big circles. And you can let the hips roll open a little bit as you trace these circles, whatever feels good, okay? A little freedom of movement here. Waking up through that hip joint and switch direction of the circles. Last time. And then let's level the hips off. 
Straighten out this leg, planting the inside of the foot on the floor. Make sure hips and shoulders are in one long line. We're gonna grab one weight. We're open through the chest, so we're not letting ourselves roll forward. If you need to put a pillow or a folded blanket under your bum, that can be helpful. We're gonna start with that rotator cuff work. So your elbow is bent and tight towards the side of your body, and you're just rotating open knuckles to the ceiling. Try to stay pretty strong through the wrist. So in other words, we're not bending at the wrist. We keep it straight, rotate open. And again, if this is not challenging, hold on to both weights instead of just one. Hopefully that burn will start to build up though, even with just lightweight. Rotator cuff, it is smaller muscles. I know for me, I'm always surprised at how quickly I feel the burn here, especially now that I'm pregnant and later in pregnancy. Because later in pregnancy, there are some, there can be some postural compensations, which, which I've noticed in myself, rounding forward a little more, my mid back, and that my shoulder is just not as strong as it was <laughs> prior <laughs> to hitting this third trimester. And that's okay. We're going to hold the arm open leg is going to lift and lower in four knuckles to the ceiling three or it doesn't have to be totally to the ceiling Two, open up to your open so it may not be knuckles straight up to the ceiling if you have to get there by rolling open through the spine then just have the arm at an angle okay so whatever your range of motion is within the shoulder joint find that and then we lift and lower through the leg pointing through the ankle as we lift flexing to lower You can hold both weights to make it harder. If you need some relief for the arm, just put that weight on your hip for a few reps and then try to go back into the hold if possible. So maybe you just do a couple here and then you go back to that hold. Alternating arm, leg, arm, leg, then we'll do both together. We're gonna hold the leg lifted. Arm will straighten out and we'll go into that single arm fly. Make sure you're reaching long through the leg and up. So we're not kicking the leg up, crunching into this top waist. It doesn't need to get that high. Only as high as you can without moving through the waist. Move through the hip. And four, you hold that leg lifted. Three, arm goes straight. Two, you're gonna hold that leg at the hover, reach long through it and straighten out that arm. Straight arm lowers parallel to the floor fly it open. As you fly it open, you're thinking of gliding that shoulder blade across your back into midline towards the spine. As you do this, notice if your leg is wanting to drop, keep it long and lifted. Continuing to breathe through this. We're going to hold the arm up to the ceiling. Leg will bend in and then kick straight adding in some internal rotation in that hip joint in four, three, two, one. Hold that arm up towards the ceiling. Now we bend the knee in, internal rotation, knee taps knee. Parallel, straighten it out. Knee bends in, rotate and stretch it long. So think of wrapping the thigh bone inward to find that internal rotation and then bringing it parallel. So we're going to hold the knee bent. We're going to move from internal to external rotation and we'll add back in the fly of the arm in three, two. Next time that knee bends in, Hold it bent, reaching the hips long, keep them stacked. External rotation, internal rotation, and we're gonna add in the movement of the arm. So as you find internal rotation, the arm lowers parallel, everything opens up on the exhale. Inhale, open. So it is the leg moving within the hip joint, it is not your hips moving. So I don't want you rolling forward and back through the pelvis. Keep that left hip stacked on top of right. Oh. 
We'll hold the internal rotation. We'll pulse the leg. We'll pulse the arm. In four. Three. Two. Next time you find that internal rotation, pause. I want you to make sure you're not tucked under through the tailbone. So neutral through the tailbone, internal rotation, flex through the ankle. It's a little pulse up and back of the leg, maintaining the internal rotation, and then add in the pulse of the arm as well. So the thigh bone is wrapping inward, keep internal rotation, little pulse up and back. Eight, seven, stay open through the chest. Six, five, four, Three, oh, I feel that. Two, one, lower the legs down on top of each other. We can go off to the side. Plant your left hand down on the floor. We're going to press up on the exhale. I want you, the, you to have the support of the core. So exhale, hug your bump up and in. When you feel that brace, press yourself up so that you are propped up on this bottom right forearm. You can move the pillow out of the way. And we're just going to pivot that forearm here for some presses. Now we're going to stay engaged through the bottom side body, engaged through the obliques. Stable through the shoulder, excuse me, and on an exhale, we straighten the arm coming up. Inhale the lower, exhale. Almost done with our side body series. We will finish up with some more upper body work, shoulder focused, using both weights, we'll be seated for that. Now we're gonna keep this press going, but we will add in the rotation of our torso and of the top leg, picking it up. So next time you press to a straight arm, rotate open to the left. Inhale, lower to the forearm, leg stack. Exhale, up and a little rotation. Three more. Last one, and you're gonna press off, taking it all the way up. Come to a cross-legged position, hands on knees, and just trace those circles for me. All right, so we're gonna finally need both weights. We're gonna be in a cross-legged position. If sitting cross-legged is uncomfortable though, you could sit in a chair, you could come to stand, kneeling, whatever works for you, okay? Also, it can be comfortable since we have the pillow. Actually, let's use the pillow. Sit your bum on the pillow and then cross your legs in front. Oh, that feels nice. Okay, so you're gonna grab the weights and then we have a bit of an upper body endurance challenge here, okay? Shoulders are going to be the main focus. We wanna start by making sure we're sitting up tall, shoulders stacked over hips, and we're neutral through the pelvis. Now we're going to maintain engagement through the core as we go through this. So still, we're breathing through the movements, and with every exhale you think, hug the bump up and in, okay? That's gonna help us maintain this good posture. Okay, so one weight in either hand, palms face up. We're gonna start with a serve the platter. You're gonna reach those arms up and out, and pull them back in. We're open through the chest as we do this. We're not countering, the extension of the weight forward with a lean back in our body, okay? So you exhale, core works as the arms go up and out. We're gonna hold the arms up and trace little circles in four, three, two, you're gonna take those arms up and out. You're gonna hold them up and out. Don't lean back, little circles, little circles. So we're using small weights here. Focus is on endurance. So the first, you know, 30 seconds, minute of this work feels nice, slight weights. But trust me, the weights will start to feel heavier and heavier as we go. Switch direction of your circles. As we keep those hands extended forward, make sure you're not leaning back, sinking into the lower back, keep engagement through the core with every exhale, you hug the bump up and in. Last three, 
two, hold with your arms forward. Now from here, it's a little bend stretch and you're gonna flip, palms up, bend stretch, palms down. Palms up, palms down. We're gonna go back to the full range, serve the platter, but we're gonna combo it with a bent raise out to the side. In eight, seven, six, five, palms up in four, three, two, one. Pause with your palms up. So serve the platter, bring the elbows in. Now with the elbows bent, you're gonna lift them up. Palms face down at the floor, at the top. Lower them down, palms face up. Serve the platter up and out, bring the elbows in. Lift them up and out. When you do that bent raise, don't pull the shoulders up to the ears. They might elevate a little bit naturally as the shoulder blades rotate up, that's fine. But it's not a pulling up of the shoulders, it's a winging up and out of the shoulder blades. Upward rotation of the scapula. So we're gonna take out the serve the platter. Actually, we're gonna take out the bent raise too. We're gonna to hold at the top of the bent raise and we're gonna take it into some rotations open into goal post. So next time those elbows lift up, I want you to hold. So your forearms are parallel to the floor. From here, you're just gonna rotate them open, goal post position, back down parallel, like you're opening the lid on a box. And close. Now let's check in with our posture. Not leaning back, crunching into our lower back. Maintaining abdominal engagement as we breathe through this. We're gonna hold in goal post for shoulder shaper in three, two. Next time you peel those arms open, hold them here. Now you're gonna close them in, open them up. Woo, in and open. Hopefully you're starting to feel that shoulder burn kick in. Close and open. We'll hold with the arms in front of our face, a little press up. In four, three, two. Next time you close, hold them together. I want the hands together, the elbows can be about shoulders distance apart. You're gonna press up, press up. Now you're only pressing up as high as you can without pushing your rib cage forward, okay? So we're maintaining that good posture. We're gonna hold with the elbows at shoulder height. We're gonna pulse the elbows in towards each other, okay? Then you get to shake out those arms. In four, three, two, one. Hold with the elbows at shoulder height and you squeeze them in. Squeeze them in. Give me eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Lower them down to your sides. Give me some shoulder circles back. Whoo, told you, good endurance challenge. So we're gonna go through that arm series one more time, but it's gonna be quicker, okay? The changes are quicker. You know the series, you know the movements we're gonna do. So it's really just a few reps of each as we make our way through that whole sequence from the top, okay? You can do it. If you need to pause the video and take longer, you can otherwise. Let's do it while we're still a little fatigued because again, we're gonna go fast. All right, palms face up, elbows bent. We start with the serve the platter. You exhale, reach them up and out. Inhale, bring them in. This is where you finish class, okay? Cool down is on the other side. Next time you go up and out, hold those arms out. Little circles for four, three, two, one. Switch direction for four, three, two, one. Keep them lifted, bend, stretch with the flip, bend, stretch with the flip, bend, stretch. Bend, stretch. We go back to the serve the platter. We're gonna combo it with that bent raise in three, two, one. Palms up. You take the elbows in, lift them up and out to the side. Serve the platter, bring it in. And now let's just pause for a second. Switch the cross of your legs. Sorry, I should have done that at the rest part but just switch which leg is in front. It doesn't make a huge difference, but we do tend to shift a little more of our weight into one hip or in a cross-legged position. So just switch it up. <laughs> one more here, and then you're gonna hold with the elbows out to the side. So lift up into that bent raise. We're not hiking the shoulders up towards the ears. We rotate open to goalpost and close them down. Just close them parallel to the floor. 
open and close like the lid of a box. We're gonna hold them open for shoulder shapers and four, we're getting there. Three, two, one, hold and goal pulse. Now close and open. If you like this type of arm work, by the way, you should check out my arm song workouts. It's this kind of work, but to the beat of the music, and I have a bunch of them. They're fun, they make for good workout finishers. You're gonna hold with the arms together. So next time you close, hold those weights together, press up, press up without flaring through the front of the ribs. We're gonna hold at shoulder height. You're gonna squeeze the elbows in to finish in four, three, two, one, hold it shoulder height, squeeze the elbows in. You know I'm struggling when I close my eyes. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Lower them down, drop the weights, and let's just make some shoulder, shir shoulder circles, shrugging them up and forward, and then switch directions. And then we're gonna make these same shoulder circles open and close, but we're gonna add in a little movement of the spine. So I want you to roll the shoulders up and forward, and then as you do, nod the chin, and vertebrae, 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 just lean forward a little bit. You don't have to come very far into this forward fold. And then we stack the spine up tall and roll the shoulders open, finding a little bit of the spinal extension. Roll them closed. You can kind of walk your hands on the floor. I can't bend down very far at this stage in pregnancy. <laughs> so it's really just through my mid spine, and that is fine. <sighs> Last time you're gonna roll it up, open up through the shoulders, and let's just finish with a moment of stillness. Hands can rest on your knees. Close your eyes if you'd like to, and just take a few deep breaths, check in with how you feel. And you can stay here as long as you'd like. You could even take it into a little bit of meditation, something I like to do after Pilates classes. But if you're ready to wrap it up, you can open your eyes if they were closed. I hope you enjoyed that class and you're feeling good after it. If you have any questions, leave them below in the comment section and I'll get back to you. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, be sure to do that. And if you have a friend or a family member who you think would benefit from these prenatal classes, I'd be so appreciative if you would share it with them in person, via social media, whatever it is, helping me spread the word is such a great help. All right, thanks for moving with me today and I will see you next time.